that later we we're going to be talking about how we we envision that uh, letter and how be I welcome the letter and uh, the the future prospect for negotiation and the future prospect for Ambazonia La Republic diplomatic relationship because whatever happens today Ethiopia was against Somalia Somaliland independence today they recognize them right that is how uh, di diplomacy work people change their, their stand many time many time and that's what happened so it is up to the BR regime to consider the future of the people of La Republic du Cameroon to live side by side as good neighbor and end the crisis rather than prolong the crisis and keeping the people of La Republic under economic hardship, economic stagnation, economic crisis. Okay, and there you see how we see the failure of the BR policy in uh, the region where you see people are crying of uh, hardship, right? That is what we are seeing today. And we're calling on the, the BR regime to to stand up to uh, to the uh, promise if he wants peace. Peace does not come with, with uh, military. Military come with force, the use of force. So we are telling the BR regime that anything we do that is not get towards peace will only lead to continuous life loss continuous people dying and that is it right uh i'll read uh, the, this letter and you know this letter is, is uh, that uh, Commander Co chris anno the president of the federal republic of ambazonia wrote to paul Bia. the letter was uh, is coming from the interim government uh, government from the federal republic of ambazonia and uh, uh, it, this letter has been making waves on social media for for the, for so many days since uh, the first this the few days. This is a congratulatory message that uh, uh, Comrade Chris Anno for Bene uh, sent to Paul Beer on the sideline of the celebration of the anniversary of independence of Republic of Cameroon. Uh, La Republic of Cameroon's Independence Day was celebrated on the 1st of January and uh, La Republic got her independence on the 1st of January and the Ambazonian leader wants to normalize relationship with Pobia and Cameroon because uh, he recognizes that the future is, is, is the same neighbor you still stay with you still live side by side with and there is no way they can move boundaries okay that is why all countries that 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 had this uh relationship in the past have come to to realize that if no matter how you fight with your neighbor that land that boundary remains there the, that boundary will never change you you still wake up in the morning and look at your neighbor in in the eyes okay your neighbor remain your neighbor okay so the the letter that comrade chris anno sent to uh president pobia uh, signifies a, a a kind of relationship that we are looking in the future where bia if bia stays there or any new president comes this is a signal message to him or her i don't care who the president is that your neighbor will ever remain Amazonia and the way you treat or you, or you behave with that person that's how you you wake up every morning and see your neighbor in the eyes Somaliland officially has now recognized uh, 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 that they are, are now a state because countries are now coming to their recognition Ethiopia now is having formal relationship with Somaliland. This is a move. Last year you saw uh, you saw uh, America also 
gave some some go ahead for the Somali land. Um, uh, they, they have some economic ties and military ties. Okay, now let me read the letter that uh, Comrade Chris Arnold write to Paul Bia. The letter reads. Let me write. Let me put it here because it's a it's a very powerful letter, and I know um, some of us have not uh, un understood what is the diplomacy, but uh, there's there are things that we do that will change the the parameters of the of the crisis. Okay, and we want our people to recognize that because. Anything you do, anything you say, anything that happen has its own impact. Okay, on whatever you do. Okay, so it's the same thing we are talking about. Our people must recognize that uh, they have a a future together with any neighbor, be it Nigeria, be it Cameroon on the other side. We have neighbors with like Equatorial uh, Guinea. Okay, they will remain our neighbor, no matter what kind of relationship we have. Those countries remain our neighbors, and we recognize that because, okay. Now I will go to that letter. Okay, let me read the letter. Dear President Paul B. I am writing to extend my warmest congratulations to you and to the people of Cameroon on the occasion of your country's Independence Day, 1st of January. This milestone is a testament on the strength and resilience of your people and marks an important moment in your nation's history. As, a cel as you celebrate this day, I wish your country continue prosperous and uh, progress. I sincerely hope that a bond of friendship and cooperation between Cameroon and the Federal Republic of Ambazonia will be established this year, crowning it with the Embassy of Ambazonia, formerly hosted in Yaoundé. On behalf of the Ambazonian people, I would like to reaffirm our commitment to peaceful coexistence and good neighborly, neighborly relationship with the Cameroonian people. Despite the war that has torn our two countries apart over the past seven years, the Ambazonian people remain hopeful that through dialogue and understanding, we can build a future in which the two nations prosper side by side. Once again, congratulations on this special day and may the spirit of independence bring prosperity to the, to the Cameroonian nation. Chris A. Forbene President, Interim Government, Federal Republic of Ambazonia. Now, that is a letter. So, this is a milestone, right? The Interim Government has opened as also, this is after seven years again, given the, uh, what we did in 2016, right? We gave a uh, peace plant to the Pobia regime. They refuse a peace plan. This time around, we are giving them a you know a hand, okay. Where we uh, the Amazonian people are coming again after seven years and say, okay, we have fought for seven years. Nobody is seeing any headway. But if you want peace, okay, we want diplomatic relationship. Diplomacy, as we know, is. Is the is the art and science of maintaining that kind of peaceful relationship between nations. So, no matter what is happen, uh, your enemy can be your enemy just because you don't want to talk. Diplomacy is that we are bringing that discussion on issues that we can have common interests. Uh, this conflict, we can negotiate it. We can talk as a team. We can. Uh, have trade relationship we can have environmental technology and issues of security we are coming to to you know as a people as a Ambazonian people to to let Bian know okay uh, it is it is 
it is very very simple for Bia to understand that uh, uh, the Kamaru government should understand how, how uh, people who practice diplomacy are called diplomats and they work towards diplomacy to you know we understand La Republic uh, have been fighting for seven years in a war declared by Bia he understands better that he cannot win the war after seven years this diplomatic outreach letter by the interim government of Ambazonia to La Republic of Cameroon seeking diplomatic recognition and relation is very very important because it gives a pathway to tell the world that oh whether we go for negotiation tomorrow this is what is still going to happen whether it takes 10 years whether it takes 50 years the purpose of diplomacy is to strengthen the the relationship between two nations right so that is why we are still telling Bia it is better for him to to go to his to his to his bed uh, his last resort his 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 last days happy rather than leave chaos behind and the worst mistake that Bia will, uh, did was to force something that is not necessary on himself at that age he would have had peace of mind peace and you know but now who has the burden of proof who has the burden of proof for this crisis now who has the burden who is who has the burden to stop the war or to end the crisis it's like republic right i want you to take a listen to this uh, uh short uh from a uh, comrade chris then you understand who has the burden of proof who has the burden to end the crisis Bia is the one to end it. We don't have pressure. Amazonian people are there. They have their Monday goes down. They are telling the world, we have our country. This is our country. This is our independence day. This is our this. This is our flag. This is all what makes a country. Now we have a, a diplomatic mission. If 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 the Republic want to have peaceful negotiation process, then they can start talking about diplomatic mission. We can open our diplomatic mission in Yaoundé boya they can open theirs in boya we start a, a very very good relationship okay take a listen to me asking what is it going to take for you guys to end the war they point to the toll of suffering that our people go through on the ground they say it is too much i want everyone to hear me out it is not on us to end the war we do not hold the responsibility to end a war that we did not provoke. We are in this war only to defend ourselves, our freedoms, our territory, and our sovereignty. This is the crux of what lies at the heart of the Ambazonian war, where the people of Ambazonia find themselves in a defensive position against what is perceived as colonization, annexation, and occupation by the government of La Republic du Cameroon. That's exactly what it is. The burden, ladies and gentlemen, of ending the conflict, the war, is placed on those who initiated the aggression in the first place, not on those who are resisting and defending themselves. The call for an end to the war shouldn't be directed to those who are defending themselves, but to those who declared it in the first place. The burden is theirs. It is a demand for La Republic to Cameroon to take the necessary steps towards de-escalation and negotiation. It is incumbent upon Paul Beer and his government, his government, to recognize the impact of their actions and to seek a negotiated settlement this includes acknowledging the legitimate grievances of the people of Ambazonia and engaging in meaningful discussions to address to address the root causes of the conflict the analogy of a knee on the neck aptly captures the power dynamic at play in the Ambazonian conflict. 
It is the knee, the knee of La Republique du Cameroon on the neck of Ambazonia, rather than the other way around. It vividly portrays the asymmetry of power and the oppressive nature of the situation. If Cameroon were to release its grip or her knee from our neck, the necessity for resistance would diminish, paving the way for a peaceful resolution to the conflict. Our objection, ladies and gentlemen, to unilaterally ending the war should not be misconstrued as a desire for prolonged conflict, not at all. Instead, it is a principle stance grounded in the recognition that the onus is on the aggressor to initiate a resolution process. Yeah, so that was that was uh, that was an excerpt of uh, of uh, the who, who has the responsibility to end the crisis. The burden of of responsibility has been on the on uh, uh, the people of uh, La Republic who were encouraging Bia, right? All along, you saw how Bia was encouraged. So the burden is not on us. The people of Southern Cameroon are ready to to negotiate at any time. We know we have a just cause. We have a a, a right of ownership of our land. We are, uh, we have, uh, the people of Amazonia are fighting for self-defense of their own land, what, what belongs to them. So they are ready for negotiation at any time. So is the Bihar government running from negotiation? But when you see the, the trajectory of event, now let me state that Somali land is now being supported by America. And once America say something is very critical what did american uh, secretary uh, 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 listen to what american press secretary said in a conversation and you, you you understand what they are trying to say here okay america comes to your, to to say their things in a gradual way well, listen to this and sean go ahead we'll wrap sure. there uh, actually change topics to africa uh, a couple of things the um uh, there was an agreement between Ethiopia and Somaliland, um, which uh, about port access. Ethiopia, of course, being landlocked. Uh, does the U.S. have any comment on that? And particularly, the, the, the leaders, the uh, de facto leaders in Somaliland, say that this will constitute formal recognition, which of course no country has given. Does the U.S. have, have something to say either about the deal itself or about the entire idea of recognition? Yeah, we did see those reports. We were concerned by them. We joined other partners in expressing our serious concern as well about the resulting spiking tensions in the Horn of Africa. We urge all stakeholders to engage in diplomatic dialogue, and the United States recognizes the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the Federal Republic of Somalia within its 1960 borders. We see you concerned by them, concerned by the deal between the Ethiopians and, and the Somalia. And, and the resulting spike in tension. Um, do you think that the deal should be rescinded? Is that uh, we think st all the stakeholders should engage in diplomatic dialogue to resolve the issue. Okay. Uh, can I get to one other part of Africa? Yeah. So. You see, now, what we have been saying long ago, that even the African Charter made it clear, the African Union has made this clear that all countries should respect their boundaries and independence. Countries that had their independence without boundaries should respect their boundaries. We never had anything to do with the Republic. La Republic had their independence. We, we were not there with them. La Republic was there with their own country. You know, dealing. Then, then we were not in their picture. We just left Nigeria. Uh, we were self-governing. We had nothing to do with La Republic before 1961. We were just self-governing. Being in the, so. If they can term our, our our country, Southern Cameroon, back then as one of the best democracies in Africa, think of it. This, our own generation, don't want democracy. Our own people. 
don't want democracy but they want to have a country yeah. the republic can do what they want it is very clear this on october 1st ambazonians celebrated their independence day in their various areas with pomp and pageantry lots of flags were displayed we were we, you know where the amber attires fighters communities this is what we're talking about the cameroon that is uh, the you know is trying to proclaim the first of january the republic is not proud to celebrate their independence why that is a question that you know people are asking why are you not proud why why is it that people must beg you people are begging you to even celebrate your, your own day a day that you are proud to say is your independence day you don't want to celebrate it what is wrong with la republic people hmm? what is wrong this is this is read this thing look this is the republic of somaliland and the federal Re democratic republic of ethiopia signed a memorandum of understanding today in the mou ethiopia officially recognizes the Republic of Somaliland, while Somaliland grants naval and commercial sea access on lease to Ethiopia for 50 years. That's what we are talking about. There are there are countries, Somaliland, Ethiopia has never recognized Somaliland. Ethiopia has never recognized Somaliland. So I made this thing the other day. I said two countries are the ones to determine their alliances okay two count any any two countries are the ones to sign their alliances not five ten fifteen countries must come together to to recognize somebody that's why when we are in america today we say okay america has granted us access to register our country as a country people say whoa, 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 whoa. It's not all countries that will recognize you before you start recognizing yourself. When Sese, when Sese Kualiok restored our independence, all Amazonians were happy. Today, the same people who were happy for our restoration of that independence are saying, no, we are not yet a country. What did you restore in, 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 19, in, in 2016? Or 17 when Siseko declared restoration. So restoration now we are looking for recognition. This is what Ethiopia is is happy to get today. Look, look. Re recognition recognizes. Recognize is, is is you know is different from recognition. You know, the, so that when you say re recognize and then restoration, we have we have restoration. So those are the two terms you have to be very careful with when you uh, want to talk about countries you know so countries already know that we restored our independence that was granted us in 1961 first of october so now we are looking for countries to recognize that independence so don't get that wrong and how do you get country to recognize you if you don't have uh, good governance if you don't have good something that you put, show them that this is what we have now you think ethiopia can recognize somaliland if they don't have good governance they don't show them that they are ready they are willing to be democratic think of it okay we are we are saying all this because uh the land public regime uh does not want to seek to normalize the relationship after this period of conflict and war okay uh we need pragmatic diplomatic and strategic relationship now ethiopia just signed with somaliland it means that for the past how many years ethiopia has never recognized this somaliland right but that's the two of them coming together and recognize themselves and had a memorandum of understanding mou so countries can decide to do what they want for themselves it's not that 50 countries will always come and sit and recognize you know that's why we say if you don't accept your own country 
eh, gradually Somaliland is gaining one country at the after the other. Why? So if you think that a uh, fifty country must sit down and say, okay, we recognize the people of Ambazonia today. No, no, it will not happen like that. Relationship is a win-win relationship. Countries want you to give this, then they'll give that. Okay. I'm sorry to say that, but that is how diplomacy works. And that is how now Ethiopia is a landlord country, right? Now they saw the path towards how they can have path through towards a Somaliland. And Somaliland had the advantage, right? Now look at our own case. Countries like uh, Gabon, countries like uh, uh, Chad, there are many countries that are landlocked, even uh, Niger. These countries are landlocked. You can have uh, 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 some kind of alliances or memorandum of understanding with these countries where we have Atlantic Ocean that goods can pass towards you see, and it still, it still brings a lot of uh, businesses and boom the economy of that country because all this, once that country have that memorandum of understanding, we we'll, we'll say, for example, Ambazonia, the, the only thing is that they will, they will have that uh, path to, to transfer their goods from Limbe Deep Sea Port or Victoria Deep Sea Port to, to Chad, for example, or to Niger, for example. Be, okay, because they are landlocked country and they need that path. So I'm just giving this example because we have a crisis for seven years. Nobody is winning this this crisis, right? Like for is losing their military every day. The people are crying of economic stagnation. Okay, we should look this as a post-war period where. We want to build something for the good of the future generation. All those people in Hong Kong are old people. They don't think about the future generation. They don't think, oh, this generation will come tomorrow. What will they eat? Real uh, government don't think that way. Real government is a futuristic government. You think building something for the future generation. How this your children's children will come and enjoy. What, what you have built okay that is the the vision for people like america today where they have built something for the future generation but if you can see what is going on today in la republic of cameroon is economic crisis the there is a humanitarian there is everything going on why because the government doesn't know how to resolve the problem the only way we I think is about war eh, that all often re result to humanitarian crisis. Okay, the population are suffering. There is displacement. There is hunger and other challenges. So normalizing our relationship with with the public can facilitate the delivery of very very different uh, economic boom. Okay, the the one mistake the the government of BI is making is that they think that they cannot live without Amazonia. I'm telling you that sometimes it, it, it baffles me. I mean, because they are looking at our resources and they say no, they cannot let these people go. But at the end of the day, how do you live with somebody that you have fought all these wars and all these things? It cannot you cannot normalize a relationship like that that is why resolving conflict and building peaceful relationship countries reduce that likelihood of future conflict because we can fight this war for the next 10 years nobody will still win this crisis so it's very advisable for somebody who wants peace to secure the environment for their citizens to bring peace Okay, to even have a good image in the international community, because look at what La Republic has done for the past seven years. The the international community has 
seen all kinds of massacre. They have condemned La Republic more than three times.